every good story that you hear, every podcast interview that you're just, you know, all in and engulfed by are these stories of people that came from nothing, people that came from, you know, huge adversity, came from huge struggles and setbacks and things to overcome and, you know, maybe hard you know, lives growing up and on the streets and, you know, drug addictions and all these things when they rise above and then they have ultimate success. They're the greatest stories that you ever hear. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I am your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ah, That's right. Sales Wolves podcast, episode 136. So happy that you have tuned in today. Today, I'm going to talk to you um, about a little bit of a story that I got out of a book that I'm reading right now. It's a story within a book. Um, and this book is super, super powerful. I'd highly recommend it. It's called chase the lion by Mark Batterson. And, uh, I'm about, I don't know, 150 pages in right now and just absolutely loving it, getting a lot from him. So highly recommend that book, go check it out. But there was a story within this book and it was called the theory of compensation. And it says around the turn of the 20th century, Alfred Adler proposed the counterintuitive theory of compensation. Adler believed that perceived disadvantages often proved to be well-disguised advantages because they force us to develop attitudes and abilities that would have otherwise gone undiscovered. It is only as we compensate for those disadvantages that we discover our greatest gifts. And yeah, I just want to kind of take off from there because every good story that you hear, every podcast interview that you're just, you know, all in and engulfed by are these stories of people that came from nothing, people that came from, you know, huge adversity, came from huge struggles and setbacks and things to overcome and, you know, maybe hard you know, lives growing up and on the streets and, you know, drug addictions and all these things when they rise above and then they have ultimate success. They're the greatest stories that you ever hear. I just, you know, interviewed a guy, Chris Cavallini, that has one of the most amazing uh, that I've ever heard uh, on my other podcast, the breadwinner podcast. And when we hear these stories, we can't help but be inspired. But what this theory of compensation is telling us is that of course, that's why they're so successful. Of course, that person rises to this insanely high level of success because they were so far down and beaten down and at such a disadvantage from the very beginning. And they were able to climb up through that and get over that and move beyond past that. And the things that they built within themselves, the determination, the tenacity that they were able to embody to get through those things when applied towards the positive, when applied towards normal, quote unquote, circumstances, puts them at a, such a huge advantage, especially in the business world, but in every, every single part of your life. And that's the power of those stories. And, you know, when I meet people now and, and I get to know their story and, and hear about their past, it's almost like the, the rougher it is, the dirtier it was, the more terrible the circumstances. It's like I start getting more and more excited. Um, if that person, I can tell that person has already made kind of that mindset switch and is already on that upper trajectory because it is almost directly proportionate how low they got, how bad it got to how amazing it will could or is at this uh, current present time. And so when you look at that story, what my challenge is to you and for, for you guys to just reflect on is, you know, think about those disadvantages that you've had. Think about those struggles. Think about those failures that you've encountered in your life. Think about the weaknesses that you have. 
Uh, one thing about self-awareness is, you know, you're, you're going to become very aware of your strengths and your weaknesses. And I've always been a big proponent of, you know, going all in and doubling down on your strengths and not spending time, you know, worried about or trying to concern yourself with your weaknesses, trying to be, uh, trying to avoid them, delegate them and just completely disregard them. But I think it is through our strengths that we're able to overcome our weaknesses. It's through our success in the things that maybe seemed insurmountable at the time, maybe started out as a failure. You think of countless stories of businesses that have been started and businesses that have succeeded and businesses that have gone on, gone on to be legendary companies that were failures in the very beginning that just hung in there over time. I mean, Andy Frisella always talks about uh, the fact that with first form, you know, he was sleeping on a mattress in the back of one of his supplement stores and didn't make over like 700 bucks a month for the first seven years. But then over time it began to, it began to create momentum and it began to progress and progress into now they're doing, you know, 250, $300 million a year on their way to a billion uh, very, very quickly. And those are the stories we all love. Love. But the reality is that's the story of all of our lives. And there was another quote from this book that I wrote down next to this. It was from a, um, an earlier part in the book, but it said mismanaged success is the leading cause of failure. Well-managed failure is the leading cause of success. So I want you to think about that right now, whether you're currently going through a failure, whether you're just getting over or on the other side of a failure, or inevitably, you know, failure at some point is going to happen. Think about that. Well-managed failure is the leading cause of success. To me, that means that you can fail your way to the top, that you can fail your way to success, but it is those that have the determination. It is though that those that have the drive to continue the courage to continue even in the face of failure, even in the face of uncertainty, even in the face of insurmountable odds that will develop through that process, the things that it takes to ultimately succeed. Just like in this quote, it says, it's only as we compensate for those disadvantages that we discover our greatest gifts. So I would beg to say, and I would challenge you guys today that it is possible that the greatest gifts that you possess, the greatest God given gifts that have been placed inside of you may not have revealed themselves yet because you haven't put them into, you haven't put yourself into a circumstance where failure seemed imminent, where those gifts could rise to the top, where you could utilize those gifts in that time in which is what gets you out of that situation, which is what gets you to move forward or move on and move on to the next thing that you ultimately succeed in. But it's uncovering and discovering those greatest gifts that you possess during your greatest trials, during your greatest frustrations, during your greatest, you know, your times of the most pain, the most sorrow, the most desperation. It's the ability to dig in during those times and keep just putting one foot in front of the other, taking it one day at a time, not looking at how insurmountable the odds seem, just looking at what can I do today to get me to tomorrow? What can I do today and accomplish today to achieve my goals for today that will make the next day a little bit easier and the next day a little bit easier and the next day a little bit easier. And it is in those moments and it is in those periods of time when you discover those gifts, when you discover what you're truly made of and when you realize just how resilient you are. And man, that's such an encouraging, encouraging thing for those that like me have been through failure. You know, I've been in a place where, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do to make money for the next day, no less the next year. I've been in a situation where I was flat broke and just had no, absolutely no idea what I was going to do. 
but to know that I have those gifts, my greatest gifts down inside me, and that it is going to take me getting through this situation that I'm in to discover them, that, that to me is exciting, it's encouraging, and it's for every single person out there. So again, I would highly recommend this book, Chase the Lion uh, by Mark Batterson. I've been just incredibly impacted by it. There's so many, I've got you know a third of this thing highlighted uh, throughout the book. It's a great book, but remember that the mismanaged success is the leading cause of failure, which that's a whole nother episode. But more importantly for today's episode, well-managed failure is the leading cause of success. So it's not what happens to you. It's not what happens when you're facing an obstacle, when you're facing imminent failure. It's what you do when those things happen. It's how you react to those things when they happen to you that will ultimately determine your success and will shine a light on some of the greatest gifts that you possess. So with that, guys, this is episode 136 of the Sales Rules Podcast. Do me a favor, go to iTunes. If you're watching this on IGTV or if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're watching it on Facebook, go to iTunes and hit the subscribe button and do me this favor of leaving a review. If you've ever gotten anything from these 136 episodes, I would love to just hear your feedback, good, bad, or indifferent, and let me know what you think about the podcast, what we can do to improve it, and we will take close note of that and adjust accordingly. Appreciate you guys. As always, I am your host, Tyler Jack Harrison. I am a sales wolf. Ahoo!